Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. mercy and all of this God promised that he will always always take care of us and we just do what he says to do
coming from. This morning coming from Second Corinthians, first chapter, NLT, starting at verse number three. God offer comfort to all. All praise to God. The Father, our Lord, Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with his comfort through Christ. Even when we are weighted down with trouble, it is for your comfort and salvation. For when we ourselves are comfort, we will certainly comfort you. Then you can patiently endure the same thing we suffer. We are confident that as you share in our suffering, you will also share in the comfort God gives us. We thought you ought to know this, brothers and sisters, about the trouble we went through in the province of Asia. We are crushed and overwhelmed beyond the ability to endure. And we thought we would never ever live through it. In fact, we expected to die. But as a result, we yeah. stop relying on ourselves and learning to rely only on God. That's right. We raise That's right. the dead. We stop relying on ourselves and start relying on God who raised the dead. God word for God people. We have a blessing on the hearers and the doers of his holy and righteous word. Amen. Good Sunday morning, W3. Good Sunday morning, W3. Good morning. Pray for me as I pray for you. Let us pray. Our Father and our God. Come to you, Father, and ask nothing for myself, but give them thanks for everything you do in the life of your people. I pray, Father, now for those who have lost so much in the destruction of the storms. We lift them up to you right now, Father. We ask that you bless them in a mighty way. And Father, for those who don't know you, the cause of their sins, we ask that you touch their hearts. Father, now, I pray for my daughter, not being selfish, Father, but you know her needs. You can do more for her, Father, than you can. And I pray that you speak with her on this day. And Father, for my W3 family, you know their needs far better than I do. And Father, bless them in their coming, bless them in their going. Father, as you enlarge our territory, actually we continue, continue to bless Pastor Brown. We lift him up to you, Father. You know it's hard. You know all the blessings that you have in store for him. Father, we give thanks for the staff. Children, ask that you 
God said amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Say amen like you love Jesus. Amen. If you love the Lord, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. God is good. He's worthy. He will supply. We walk by. We walk by. We walk by. Not by. And one more time, bless the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Amen. God is indeed enlarging our territory. Amen. Would you look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, I know I'm blessed. I know I'm blessed. I know I'm blessed. That neighbor hate and find another neighbor. Say, neighbor, I know I'm blessed. I know I'm blessed. Amen. 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 It is good to be in the house of the Lord. And I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. How many of you are happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. That you would rest on your legs. We want to go to God in, in prayer. We're going to have a short word of prayer. Uh, but prayer is in order at all times. Yeah. And as we pray, we not only want to pray for ourselves, but we want to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ and in creation. Remember yeah. your loved ones, your friends, co workers, neighbors, and the like. Amen. Amen. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. Let us pray, Lord. We love you today. And we give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is to be praised. We love you. We worship you. We magnify you. We adore you. We exalt you. And we lift your name on high. We thank you for being the God of our salvation. The God of our deliverance. We thank you for being our direction and our guide. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you are a strong tower. We thank you that you are a leaning post when we get old and feeble. We thank you that you are our way maker. And God, you have never left us, neither have you forsaken us. And for your beauty and for your glory, for your holiness, we come this morning just to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for last night's lying down. Thank you for early morning rising. Thank you for a roof over our head and clothes on our back and shoes on our feet. We thank you for bread on the table. We thank you for keeping us in our right minds. Lord, we thank you for giving us a reasonable portion of health and strength, knowing that it could be worse or it could be the other way. Lord, we thank you right now. We thank you for our neighbors, our brothers and sisters in front of us and behind us and all around us, beside us. God, we pray that you would search their hearts. And Lord, if whatever they stand in the need of, would you bless them right now? In the name of Jesus, would you touch their hearts? Would you touch their spirit right now? Would you give them peace in their mind and joy in their heart? Would you have thine own way in their life, oh God? Would you search their families, their spouses, their children, their loved ones, and touch them in a very special way, oh God? We remember those that are sick and inflicted with diseases, Lord, and sicknesses all over the land. Would you be a balm in Gilead? Would you heal even right now? Touch right now, oh Lord. And have thine own way. Then God we pray that you bless the W3 Baptist Church. That you would continue to strengthen her. And keep her. And enlarge her territory. Then God we invite your spirit into this place. We know your Holy Spirit lives within us. And indwells with us. But God would you permeate this atmosphere one more time. And let your spirit fall fresh upon us. And we may feel your power and your presence. We give your name the glory today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Let every believer say amen. amen. Now before you sit down, why don't you shake somebody's hand or greet someone and tell them you love them. God bless you. Good morning and good to see you. Amen. Come on, just fellowship for one moment. Come on, come on. Just say I love you. God bless you. Good to see you. 
Come on, come on, get out of that seat. Shake someone's hand, tell them I love you, God bless you. Good to see you. So here at the W Free Baptist Church, we believe in the principle of tithing. Jesus said in Luke 6:38, "Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom." Malachi 3 says, "Will a man, woman, rob God? You say, wherein have we robbed thee? We have robbed thee in tithes and in offerings." But the Word of God continues to say that if you trust God. At his word and try him and see if he will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. So here at the W3 Baptist Church, there are several ways you can give. Of course, you can always give in person. If you are writing a check, if you are writing a check, if you are telling your age by writing a check, then you make the check payable to the W3 Baptist Church. Amen. We have a generation of people that don't know nothing about a checkbook. Amen. Where you learn how to balance a checkbook in school, they don't teach that anymore. Uh, but make your checks payable to the W3 Baptist Church. You can even write it in cursive, because a lot of people can't read cursive, because they don't teach cursive in school anymore. Amen. But make it payable to the W3 Baptist Church. Uh, you can also give by way of Cash App at the W3 uh, Church, and you can also pay by way of PayPal. Of uh, the W3 uh, church as well. Doesn't matter which method you give, as long as you give, knowing that you can't beat God's giving, no matter how hard you try. Amen. If you are in need of a tithing envelope, uh, please raise your hand and one of our lovely ushers uh, will get you a tithing envelope. Amen. Amen. We got one coming. Amen. Amen. Just uh, go ahead and take your time. Amen. Get your tithes and offerings ready. Praise the Lord. And we will wait on you. Amen. We will wait on you. Uh, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the seed that we're getting ready to sow. Uh, we thank you for blessing us that we may be a blessing. We hold this seed in our hand with faith. We trust and believe and stand on your promises that if we give that you're going to bless us 60, 90, and 100 fold in return. We give out obedience, 
unto your word. We believe in our faithfulness of stewardship. And now we sacrifice this tithe, this offering, this seed, not just to the W3 Baptist Church, Lord, but we give it to you. And we thank you in advance for the blessings to come as a result of our obedience to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, our ushers are now coming uh, to receive your tithes and offerings. If you would begin uh, to pass your envelopes down to the aisle with the nearest usher. Ushers are coming. Amen. Pass those down to the outside aisle and the ushers will receive those at this time. Amen. Amen. What a blessing it is to be able to give. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for all of the jobs and careers and streams of income. Thank you, Lord, for favor and for blessings. Thank you, Lord. You've been so good to us. Amen. 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 sacrificial seeds that have been sown. We bless these seeds, these gifts, these tithes and offerings, and we render them to you, O God, for the upkeep and upbuilding of your kingdom here at the W3 Baptist Church. That the word of God may be preached, that lives may be touched, that sinners may be saved, that the lost may be found, that your name may be glorified, that there may be meat in your house, Thank you, Lord, for these tithes and offerings. We render them to you. Let them be used for the purpose and intent of which they were given. In Jesus' name we pray that every believer say amen. amen. And while we are thanking God for the tithe and offering, let's give God some praise for our ushers. We have experienced ushers. We have ushers in training. And some of y'all, some ushers that not in the ushers ministry. <laughs> Amen. But we thank and praise God for all of our ushers. And let's give God praise for our worship team as they come back and give us one more selection. And after which we'll come uh, back and render to you the word of God. One more time. Let's bless God as they come and give us all the selection.
Bibles and your electronic devices as we go to the Word of God. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and His righteousness. Dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. If you have your Bibles, I ask that you would turn with me to the book of Judges. The book of Judges, chapter number 11. I haven't done this, I don't believe yet, but to our deacons and their wives, to our finance ministry and trustees, to our worship team, our musicians, to our lovely ushers, and to each and every one of you, God's children, it's good for us to be here. Amen. Judges chapter number 11, I want to turn your attention to verses 1 through 7. I'm going to be reading from the King James Version, Judges 11, 1 through 7, it's way in the Old Testament. Don't fake it till you make it. I want y'all to read this. Judges 11, 1 through 7, when you found it, shout word. word. You still look and say wait. Wait. All right, we'll wait. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges. All right, it's the beginning of the Bible. Judges, chapter number 11, verses 1 through 7. Here's the word of the Lord for God's people. It says, Now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty man of Phelan, and he was the son of an harlot. And Gilead begat Jephthah. And Gilead's wife bare him son. And his wife's sons grew up, and they thrust out Jephthah, and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brethren, and dwelt in the land of Tob. And there were gathered vain men to Jephthah and went out with him. And it came to pass in process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. And it was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tob. And they said unto Jephthah, Come. And be our captain, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. And Jephthah said unto his, the elders of Gilead, Did not ye hate me? And expel me out of my father's house? Why are ye come unto me now, when ye are in distress? I want to preach from this thought. Don't throw me away. Don't throw me away. You may have your seats. Would you just preach that to your neighbor and say, neighbor, be careful. Don't throw me away. If you're ready for the word of God, then give God a hand clap of praise. In 1985, a writer and filmmaker by the name of Alice Walker released a Pulitzer Prize winning contribution to the world. A film about a young African American girl that shows the problems faced by African American women during the early 1900s to include poverty, racism, and sexual discrimination. Some of the characters included Sophia, played by Oprah Winfrey, Suge Avery, played by Margaret Avery, Harpo, played by Willard E. Peel. Nettie, played by Akusa Busia. 
and others made up the film. But the real main characters of the movie were Albert, a.k.a. Mr. Played by Danny Glover. And most famously, Seeley, played by Whoopi Goldberg. Many of you know by now that the name of this film is called The Color Purple. The Color Purple is an epic tale spanning 40 years in the life of Seeley, an African-American woman living in the South who survives incredible abuse and bigotry. Yeah. After Seeley's abusive father marries her off to the equally debasing Mr. Albert Johnson, Things go from bad to worse, leaving Celia to find companionship anywhere she can. She perseveres, holding on to her dream of one day being reunited with her sister in Africa. There is a major transition that takes place in Celia's life when she finally finds the courage to stand up to Albert, a.k.a. Mr., and causes her own climatic shift for her own very abusive situation. Yeah, yeah. Upon her departure, having packed her bags and filled them with raggedy clothes and other items of insignificant value, will demonstrate her permanent divorce and emancipation from Albert. Celie yeah. is on the cusp of freedom. A freedom she has never experienced since the time she came into the world. Celie yeah. looks Mr. Sternly in the eye, triangulating her fingers yeah. Yeah. to emphasize her sincerity and makes a very profound declaration and proclamation. She says, I curse you until you do right by me. Everything you think about is going to crumble. Seely, having heard Shug's plea to leave with her now, and Albert's insults of how black she is, how poor she is, how ugly she is, and the fact that she's a woman and nothing at all, Seely recites herself to Mr. One More Good Time. Until you do right by me, everything you even think about going to fail. This was Celie's dramatic exit from her very dramatic and abusive life that she's endured from her own biological father and from the hands of Albert Johnson. When one continues to observe and watch the movie, it is discovered that Celie's curse on Mr. comes true. He does not recover from her abuse. His house is ramshacked and raggedy and uncared for. Dishes are unwashed. Furniture is unclean. No food is cooked or prepared. Even the chickens are loose in the yard, laying eggs everywhere. Seely's presence is evidently missed. Mr. Ages in the worst of ways. He loses his swagger and energy and seems to age as fast as his own father. Albert Johnson's life crumbles because he mistreated Seely. A right he thought he had because she was black, poor, ugly, and a woman. Or perhaps he thought he could mistreat her because her own biological father, through incest, bore two children by Seely. Whatever his unjustified reasons were, it pained Seely. It hurt Seely. It delayed Seely, but it didn't stop Seely. What one should observe from Seely's life story is that no matter how neglected and abused one may be, there are at least three things you just can't get rid of. Number one, God's promise over your life. Number two, God's purpose in your life. And number three, God's plan for your life. Let me say one more thing. I said what one should observe from Seely's life story 
is that no matter how neglected and abused one may be, there are at least three things you just can't get rid of. You cannot get rid of God's promise over your life. You can't get rid of God's purpose in your life. And you can't get rid of God's plan for your life. Mister did all he could. And so did Celie's own biological father. To thwart and derail Celie's life. But God had a promise and a purpose and a plan for Celie. Mister just didn't know who he was throwing away. And God's promise, God's purpose, and God's plan is also seen and relevant in the story of a man named Jephthah, found in Judges chapter number 11. The Bible says that Jephthah was a Gileadite, the son of Gilead, a mighty man of valor or war, and was born the son of a harlot, a.k.a. prostitute. Because of his illegitimacy, his brothers, born in wedlock, drove him from his paternal home and refused him any share in the inheritance from their father. Their actions were confirmed by the elders of Gilead. Jephthah, being rejected and neglected, fled to the land of Tob, a probable region in Syria. In Tob, Jephthah made a name for himself by his prowess and gathered about him a band of men without employment like King David's men. Jephthah must not be thought of as just a captain of a band of freebooters, for he was a God-fearing man with a high sense of justice and of the sacredness of vows made to God. It would be easy to attempt to judge Jephthah based on his current situation as a nobody, but one must be wise to never judge a book by its cover. Especially when it pertains to one whom God has a promise, a purpose, and a plan for their lives. At the time of his expulsion by his brothers, Israel had been for many years under bondage to the Ammonites. In the course of time, when these oppressors of Israel were planning some new form of humiliation, the elders of Gilead offered to anyone who was willing to accept the office of captain the headship over all the inhabitants of Gilead. When no one volunteered, the elders in desperation went to Jephthah and urged him to become a captain of yeah. Israel's army. Yeah. No man at this time, young and old, were bold enough to lead Gilead's army against the Philistines or the Ammonites. The same men who were bold enough to chase Jephthah away are too afraid to fight the men who are oppressing them. Let me say it one more time. I said the same men who were bold enough to chase Jephthah away are too afraid to fight the men who are oppressing them. So they come up with an idea to retrieve Jephthah from Tob and plead with him to become their military captain. Here it is, because they just didn't know who they were throwing away. This action, although desperate, is so intriguing because it's the same Jephthah, the son of Gilead, whose mother is a prostitute, whose brothers expelled him from the land, and his rightful inheritance is now being beckoned by the elders to return to Gilead and be their captain in the army to fight against the Ammonites. This same Jephthah that they treated like trash, forcing him to live in a town of thieves called Tob, are now requesting his talents and skill to be returned to Gilead to help them fight alongside or fight against the Ammonites. It's the same Jephthah, y'all, that they're asking to come to fight in a battle that he did not even 
even create. As a matter of fact, according to Judges chapter 10, verse number 6, the Bible says that the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam and Ashtoreth and the gods of Syria and the gods of Sidon and the gods of Moab and the gods of the children of Ammon and the gods of the Philistians and forsook the Lord and would not serve God. They didn't just throw Jephthah away, but it sounds like they threw God away too. So in return, after God had delivered them from Pharaoh in Egypt, opening the Red Sea, bringing them across the Jordan River, giving them the city of Jericho and the promised land that God would inevitably allow them to become the servants of those gods and their people, primarily the Philistians and the Ammonites. God told the children of Israel in Judges chapter number 10 that he delivered them from the Egyptians, from the Amorites, from the Ammonites, from the Philistians, from the Zidonians, from the Amalekites, and even the Moabites. And now that life was good for them, that the children of Israel would inherit lands that they did not discover, drink from wells that they did not dig, and eat of the grains and vegetation that they did not plant and live in houses that they did not build, they would forsake God and mingle with the other strange gods. So when they cried out to their true and living God, his response was, stop crying to me and cry to the gods you love and serve. Yes, God turned a deaf ear to his own people and allowed them to reap what they have sown. And the Philistians and Ammonites are vexing the children of Israel with hardship, with enslavement, with brutality, and even death for a period of 18 years. And perhaps their struggle wouldn't have been so harsh if they were more careful of who they were throwing away. And so Someone, y'all, y'all help me preach this, but someone remembers seemingly out of nowhere that there is a bastard child, the son of a prostitute, Gilead's sinful mistake, a mighty man of warrior, a strong man by the name of Jephthah. Y'all remember him, so says the elders. You all remember the one we threw away, the one whom his half-brothers banned from his inheritance and drove him into the deserted wilderness of toll to live among these. Y'all remember him, the one they threw away for 18 years. His brothers didn't think about him not one time. For 18 years, they didn't send this man a care package. For 18 years, they didn't put no money on his books or send him some commissary. For 18 years, he isn't invited to the family reunion, no birthday parties, or any kind of celebration. As a matter of fact, it is strongly believed that Gilead, the father, has died during the period of 18 years, and there's no mention in the text that Jephthah's brother sent him him an invite to the funeral or most likely left his name off the obituary as a son of Gilead. His brothers don't give him any inheritance and could care less about his social status and his well-being. But what his half-brothers do not understand is that no matter how cruel people can be, that no one, including the devil, can stop the promises, the purposes, and the plans God has for someone's life. The devil and all his adversaries need to know that God has some people that you just can't throw away. Say it again one more time. I said the devil and all of his adversaries need to know that God has some people that you just can't throw away. They didn't hear you repeat one more time. I said the devil and all 
Paul and his adversaries need to know that God has some people that you just can't throw away. And I don't know who I'm preaching to, but someone needs to get that way down in their spirit that God sees the best in me. That I have value with God. I might be trash to you, but I'm treasure to Him. And if you want to be blessed, you might want to be careful how you treat me. Because until you do right by me, everything you try to do will fail. Until you do right by me, nothing in your life will prosper. And this is so true for Jeff. He's making a life in tow the best way he can. He is not the cause of his situation. It's not his fault that he has to live in tow. He did not choose his mother or his father. He obviously had a job in the army prior to his abandonment. He served well and gained a reputation as a mighty warrior. He stayed in his lane. He minded his own business. And yet from within, his own half-brothers would die him out, neglecting him his rightful part in the inheritance, jumping him, forcing him to leave the city of Gilead and live in Tob. Furthermore, it's not Jephthah's fault that the children of Israel have found themselves in the hands of an angry God. They disobeyed God. They worshipped idol gods. They strayed away from God. And now their fight is not only with their enemies, the Philistines and the Ammonites, but with God himself. Here it is, because you just can't mistreat people, handling them however you want to, because times and times are looking good for you at the moment. Additionally, this text proves to us that if people are willing to mistreat God, then you and I don't stand a chance. Also, if people will receive all these blessings from a good God, having delivered the children of Israel from the wilderness and their enemies, and still turn their back on God, then you and I don't stand a chance. Might and the reason why some people treat you like Jephthah is because they treat God like Jephthah. When times are good, they rail on people, they dog people out, they cut people out, they lead people out, and will continue to do so as long as the sun is shining bright in their lives. But as soon as the sun sets and darkness shows up, they return to God, begging and pleading for God to come to their rescue. And somebody needs to understand perhaps an enemy in your life that you can't throw God away and you can't throw me away. Because just as the sun is shining on a Sunday, hell may break loose in your life on a Monday and you're going to need a God on your side. And I can imagine, W3, in my Baptist preacher's sanctified imagination that when his half-brother showed up with the elders to beg in his return to lead the children of Israel in battle, that Jephthah had a spirit of Mike Jones. Back then, you didn't want me. But now I'm hot. You're all on me. And this same display of hypocrisy and hatred is evident all throughout the Bible. Let me just give you three quick examples. There was a man named Job who was upright, shrewd, evil, and righteous before God. He was the richest man in all the East. God made a deal with Satan that Job wouldn't curse God to his face. Satan destroyed nearly everything Job had, killing all of his children, losing all of his cattle and herds, losing most of his servants and all of his crops and vegetations in his barn yards. First, it was his own wife, Miss Job, who never 
never worked a day since she was married to Job. Spent money all day long without a budget and was the envy of all women during her time. She would come to her innocent husband and suggest that he curse God and die. Shortly after his three so-called friends show up from afar and say to Job, surely you must have done something to anger God. You need to confess your sins. You're not that holy and righteous and we know you've done something wrong. And they harassed Job for a long time until Job had to forgive them for their harassment. But because Job stayed faithful, told his wife and friends, you better be careful trying to throw me away. Don't he slay me, yet will I trust him. In all of my appointed time, I'm going to wait until my change come. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of our God. And then God turned it all the way around and gave Job double for his trouble. And I come to tell the Job's in W3 that you might need to let somebody know you ought to be careful trying to throw me away. There was a young man named Joseph. He was also loved by God. Had a few dreams, y'all remember him. Favored by his biological father, Jacob, and was hated by his half-brothers. They hated Joseph so much that they stripped him of his coat of many colors, dipped it in animal blood, threw him into a waterless pit, sat down and ate sandwiches, then stood up and sold their brother into slavery and went home and lied to their father, saying a wild beast has killed your son having done nothing wrong but share his dreams Joseph's brothers did him much harm caused him many sleepless nights and found himself in some bad situations however God would favor Joseph bless him to become a high ruler of Egypt and position him as the treasurer to Pharaoh folk ought to be careful of who they're trying to throw away. Those same brothers that did him wrong had to make a U-turn and come back to Joseph begging for mercy. And Joseph told them, you meant for evil, but God ripped it out for my good. Don't you throw me away. The same ones that threw Joseph away, God fixed it so they had to come back his way. But you have all neighbors say, neighbor, don't you throw me away. There was a 33-year-old man. Y'all may know him. His name was Jesus, God's only begotten son, the savior of the world, a bomb in Gilead, born of a virgin Mary, impregnated by the Holy Ghost, birthed in a manger with milk rags as a blanket and the stars shining above him. Jesus healed the sick. He gave sight to the blind, caused the lame to walk, caused the deaf to hear, called demons out of people, and raised others from the dead. Jesus began his week being anointed in Bethany by Mary. This same Jesus would ride into Jerusalem on a donkey and the people would lay down their coats and palm branches in the way, showing him honor and respect and glory as the coming Messiah on a Sunday. They loved Jesus on Sunday. They stood out on the streets who raised his name on Sunday. They gathered in the masses on Sunday and sang his praises. But something happened between Sunday and Thursday because by Thursday, his very own disciple betrayed him. Jesus serves communion to his disciples. Jesus is arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, identified by a kiss, then beaten until he bleeds and by Friday Somebody shout Friday. At 9 a.m., Jesus was on a cross between two thieves. It was a hell of a week for Jesus. But you ought to be careful who you trying to throw away. They threw him on that old red cross and stuff started happening. Say it one more time. I said they threw him on that old red cross.
cross and stuff started happening. Sun wouldn't shine. Moon turned red. Earth started quaking. Bears started ripping. Bears started rising. People started pointing at the cross. Be careful of who you're trying to throw away. They took him off the cross. They threw him in a grave. Thinking he was falling away. But bright early Sunday morning. Somebody shouted in for work, before the moon clock out for work, while the rooster was still asleep, while the stars still had a faint twinkle in the sky, right early in the morning, the same one that they threw away came back from the grave with all power. Oh, and I'm feeling that this and I so feel like preaching in his hands. Y'all take a seat, I'm just getting started. Satan, a wife and friends tried to throw Job away. Half brothers, a lion part of his wife, and some inmates tried to throw Joseph away. Half brothers, a city of Gilead, and some elders tried to throw Jephthah away. Pharisees, Jews, and Sadducees tried to throw Jesus away. And people would try to throw you and I away, but they better be careful. As God gave Job double for his trouble, as God promoted Joseph from the pit and the prison to the palace, as Jephthah from told to captain of the armies of Gilead, and Jesus from a slain sacrificial lamb to a resurrected Savior, God will do the same thing for you and I. Don't throw me away. Throw me away if you want to and watch God work. I said, don't throw me away, but throw me away if you want to and watch God work. Watch God raise you up. Watch God turn it around. Watch God fix your situation. Watch God prepare tables in the presence of your enemies. Watch God do the impossible because he is a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. He's a light in the darkness. Our God, that is who you are. You better preach, Pastor Brown. I think I will. I said he's a ring maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. He's a light in the darkness. Our God, that is who you are. I haven't told anyone to do anything yet. But why don't you go ahead and find you a good friend? Why don't you find you a good neighbor and tell your neighbor, don't you throw me away. I might be broken, but don't throw me away. I might be bruised, but don't throw me away. I might be betrayed, but don't throw me away. I might be bleeding, but don't throw me away. Because I serve a God that specializes in turning situations around. My God is faithful to his promises. My God has a purpose for my life, and my God has a plan for my life. Don't throw me away because I'm first to live in toll, because you think I'm black, or you think I'm poor, or you think I'm ugly. No, ma'am, no, sir. Unless I need to remind you, until you do right by me, I'm still his child. I walk in his favor. I live in his grace. I awaken to his mercy. I'm the beneficiary of his goodness. Don't you throw me away. I am the head. I am not the tail. I am the lender. I'm not the borrower. I am a bird. I'm not beneath. Don't throw me away. I need to wrap this up. I need to wrap this up. The text says that the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of Tob and begging for him to be their captain. Jephthah's response was quite intriguing because he is in no hurry to help them without first making sure that they're willing to follow his leadership. As a matter of fact, Jephthah says in verse number 7, didn't y'all hate me? And expel me out of my father's house? Why are y'all coming to me now in your distresses? Ain't it funny how the tables turn? Lord have mercy. Jephthah was in the valley living victorious 
and the people of Gilead was on the mountain living in misery and a mess. Because it's not always where you live, but who lives with you. Bigger isn't always better. Louder isn't always with love. And a whole lot of folk don't mean it's always friendly. Rewind, say it one more time. I said bigger isn't always better. Louder isn't always with love. And a whole lot of folks don't mean it's always friendly. Jephthah says, I'm not just coming to fight with you, but I need to be your captain of all the armies and the people of Gilead. Jephthah knew something that we we are just figuring out, figuring out, and that is the problem with Gilead was the leaders and the elders. Jephthah wasn't going to waste his time winning a battle for corrupt leaders, then handing the empire back over to these same disavowing, ungodly, corrupt people. The reason why so many businesses, churches, and organizations never get any better and eventually die. Is because they want to change everything and anything about the place except the leaders that's destroying the entity in the first place. The same one that they threw away nearly 18 years ago is the same one that they have to return to in order that Gilead might be rescued. And look who they threw away. Y'all need to understand something about this boy's resume, his vitae, and his curricula. You knew that he was the son of a prostitute, but did you not know that Jephthah was not only the son of Gilead, but Gilead was the grandson of Manasseh. Manasseh was the son of Joseph. Joseph was the son of Jacob. Jacob was the son of Isaac. Isaac was the son of Abraham. And Abraham, the prophet's father of many nations. This man had promise and prosperity in his bloodline. And he didn't get here by mistake. God promised. God purposed. And God planned for Jephthah to lead in such a time as this. Look who they threw away. You got to go all the way back to Genesis chapter number 12 when God told Abraham to leave your country and your acquaintances and your kindred and go into a land that I will show you and I'll make you a father of many nations. Here is Jephthah who is one of the sons of Abraham and they threw this bad here. And when Jephthah's brothers closed one door, God opened another door. Look who they threw away. Jephthah was a man of God, a mighty man of war, and a man of good reputation. Look who they threw away. Jephthah, even while in Tob, took the least, the last, and the lost men of the town and trained them to be good men. Look who they threw away. This away, rejected, banned, exiled, and expelled Jephthah is now remembered for his abilities and his skills. And while the elders only come for him because of their distresses and Jephthah's fighting abilities, it would be Jephthah who says, the Lord will be with me. The Lord will give me the victory. Jephthah knew that God has never seen a way that he could not make. Jephthah knew that God has never seen a door that he could not open. Jephthah knew that God has never seen a problem that he could not solve. I'm going to preach myself happy up in here, up in here, up in here. I said Jephthah knew that God had never seen a way that he could not make or a door that he could not open or a problem that he could not solve. I believe in all Jephthah's betrayal by his brother that he learns something while he's in total. I believe 
that Jephthah found himself in a closer relationship with God. Although it wasn't his fault that he was betrayed and banned from Gilead, that God would not betray him and that God would not ban him, but rather drew closer to Jephthah even while he's in tow. And that sounds just like our God. When others have left us alone, turned their backs on us, have deserted us into some lonely, isolated places, that God is ever near to us. And if Jephthah could testify, as I make ready for my clothes, that Jephthah seen the lightning flashing, and he heard the thunder roll, he felt the sin breaker's passion, trying to conquer his soul, but he heard voice of Jesus, getting him to still fight on. God promised never to leave him, never to leave him alone. For one more time, would you help a neighbor and say, neighbor, you ought to be careful. Don't you throw me away. I am a child of God. I got favor on my life. I am a blessing. God loves me and his anointing is all over my life. I may have some past history, but I'm still a child of God. Every that neighbor for the last time and say, neighbor, do you know who you're sitting next to? Neighbor, don't mind my dress or my suit, but I That's going to do it for you. Just put your heels. But where it's coming to your help. Because all of your help comes from the Lord. You don't have to tell nobody else. It's just say it way down in your spirit. Don't throw me away. Don't throw me away. I am a child of God. God is looking after me. Somebody ought to feel that in their spirit. You know God is watching over you. Amen. We want to extend an invitation to Christian discipleship. We want to allow someone to invite Jesus Christ into their life. And whether you're in person, whether you're watching by way of Facebook or our church website, whatever streaming platform that you're using, this is an opportune time for you to give your life to Christ. The same God that saved Job the same God that saved Joseph. The same God that saved Jephthah. The same God that raised Jesus from the dead can do it for you right now. He's already demonstrated his power. He's already demonstrated his love. He's already demonstrated his ability, his willingness to save you. And the Bible says that if you would confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that thou shalt be saved. He can save you right now. You don't have to wait another day, another hour, another minute, another second. This is your opportune time 
to give your life to Christ. And all you have to do, if you're watching at a distance, if you are not here in this sanctuary, all you have to do is begin to pray and ask God to come into your life. Say the prayer that Peter prayed, Lord, save me. Ask the question, what must I do to be saved? And if you begin to talk to God and pray to God, that God will show up and answer your prayer and will save you right where you are, in your home, in your car, on your front porch, the cubicle on your job, wherever you may be, God can save you right where you are. And if you are in person and you want to give your life to Christ, all you have to do is raise your hand. One of our deacons, our hospitality ministry, will minister to you and welcome you to the household of faith. If there's one that has a desire to be saved, would you go ahead and make that known now that we may pray with you and, and help you and lead you in the direction that you should go so that you can see Jesus for yourself. And perhaps you're already saved and you've been watching, you've been streaming, you've been waiting for the opportunity moment to join the W3 Baptist Church. You don't have to look any further enough to search any further enough to keep jumping different streaming church channels to find a place. God is leading you to W3. You can make this your place of worship today. All you have to do is send us a message. Inbox our media ministry. Email us or visit our website. Let it be known. I want to join the W3 Baptist Church. Put it in the comments, in the thread. I want to be a member. And one of our media ministry personnel will reach out to you and welcome you to the W3 Baptist Church. If you're in person, you said, I want to join the W3 Baptist Church. I believe God is indeed enlarging this territory. Songs are being rendered. Prayers are being offered. The Word of God is being preached. If you want to join the W3 Baptist Church and you're in person, all you have to do is just raise your hand or step out from wherever you are. If you'll come forward, we would love to welcome you. We would love to have you. We would love for you to be our new brother and sister in Christ here at the W3 Baptist Church. As we grow, if there is one, man, woman, boy, girl, young, old, if you're here and you want to be a member of the W3 Baptist Church, you can come and join at this time. Say, I want to be a, a part of this movement, this blessing that God has favored on this church. From the ground up, I want to be a part of it. I want to help it grow. I want to be a part of something meaningful, something relevant. A church that stands on the word, worship, and witness. A church that preaches what the Bible says. If that's you and you want to join, don't wait another moment. Tomorrow's not promised. You need to be a part of a church that will support you, that will pray for you, that you can call and lean on in your times of distresses where you have prayer warriors pleading on your behalf. Where you have a chain of brothers and sisters that will love you that will help you, that will encourage you and give you strength, especially in your times of weakness. If there's one that him or her come at this time, amen. If there's not, you may have your seats. And one more time, let's give God some praise. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. We ask God that you would ready yourselves uh, for communion, the Lord's Supper, of which we observe um, every first Sunday of the month. And the Bible teaches that as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do it in remembrance of Jesus Christ. Paul wrote that we ought to search ourselves and think of ourselves, and if uh, we have any fault or all against our brothers and sisters in Christ, that we ought to pray and ask for forgiveness, yeah, that's right. that we may be found worthy to participate in the Lord's Supper. So many are sick, and some have even died because they eat and drink of the Lord's Supper unworthily. So would you take a moment as you are preparing to begin to pray now? And ask God, as the psalmist asked, search me, O God. And if you find anything like fault or sin, would you purge it and remove it uh, from me? Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the sacrifice that he made by giving his life on the cross and the shedding of his blood. 
We thank you, oh God, that you spared not but gave your only begotten Son because you so loved the world, praying and hoping that all would accept him and that none would perish but would have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. And the Bible says that in the night that Jesus was to be betrayed, believed on that Thursday that he dismissed one of his disciples by the name of Judas. Judas sold Jesus out to the council for 30 pieces of silver. Having had the Lord's Supper, Jesus goes out to the Garden of Gethsemane. And there he would pray until it looked like great sweat drops of blood would fall from his face. Ultimately, he would be arrested in that Garden of Gethsemane. But while he was at the table, he instituted what we now understand as the Lord's Supper. The Bible says that after they had dined, that Jesus took bread. He lifted it up, he gave thanks, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. You may eat at this time. And in the same manner, he took a cup of wine. He lifted it up and said, Take and drink ye all of it, for this cup represents the shedding of my blood for the New Testament church and the remission of sins. Drink ye all of it. And the Bible says that after they had eaten and drank, that they began to walk towards the Mount of Olives singing a hymn. We don't know which hymn they, they sang, but... There's one old familiar that I want to recite in your hearing um, as we close out our communion service and prepare for our announcements. And it says, Blessed be the tithes that binds our hearts in Christian life. A fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Before our Father's throne, we pour our ardent prayers our fears, our hopes, our aims are one, our comforts and our cares. This is the fellowship that Jesus prayed that we would have in John 21 for his disciples and for those to come, that we would be in fellowship of love with one another. Would you just look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, I love you. I love you. Come on, tell them I love you. I know you don't like me sometimes, but still, I love you. I love you. You get on my nerves, but I love you. You call me when I'm asleep, but I love you. Amen. All right, I believe we are ready for our announcements at this time. Amen. Greetings, W3 Baptist Church. These are your announcements for the week of April 2nd. Happy birthday to everyone celebrating in the month of April. May the Lord continue to bless you with his love and grace on your special day and for always from your W3 family. The W3 Baptist Church presents our Resurrection Sunday program on April 9th at 9.30 a.m. titled The Other Side of the Rainbow by Dr. Grace Wyatt. Please see Dr. Wyatt or Deaconess Kimberly Johnson for more information. We are excited to announce that we have a new item in stock. That's right. Pick up your copy of Black Fathers, The Living Dead, authored by our very own senior pastor, Dr. Corey D. Brown. You may visit our online store at www.thew3church.com or scan the QR code seen on our screen. You may also see a ministry member after each service to make your purchase today. Join our church ministry team 
we are looking forward to working with you. There are plenty of ministries to match your interests and skills, including our newly added care and comfort ministry, along with congregational care, hospitality, media, music, seniors, Sunday school, trustees, ushers, and youth. Feel free to speak with any ministry member after each service. This concludes our announcements for the week. As always, thank you for joining us at the W3 Church, where we preach what the Bible says. Amen. Amen. Thank you to our beautiful team for those Amen. wonderful announcements Amen. and great things are to come. Amen. So let's make sure that we are uh, adhering to our announcements. Listen, W3 is being blessed so tremendously Amen. by God. Come on, let's give God a hand. I want to quickly acknowledge uh, just uh, three of our deacons real quickly. Uh, Deacon Sammy Stewart. Deacon Chris Watson and Deacon Sean Johnson uh, and myself, uh, we were out here um, at midnight uh, uh, getting things organized uh, for church uh, today. Uh, we always or have encountered on several occasions where there are other events here happening on a Saturday and uh, Deacon Watson is the liaison between W3 Baptist Church and Holiday Inn. And he um, converses uh, with the staff here, and they let him know when we can come out and set up. And we couldn't come out last night until midnight. Mm -hmm. And so I know I left. I actually was sent home by Deacon Stewart at 2.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. And those three deacons yet remained uh, still vacuuming and cleaning up and setting up. I don't know what time they left. Um, 3 a.m. They left at 3 a.m. And all of them are here at 7.30. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. So we have not just them, but we've had it on several occasions where our vision team has come out to have late night setups to prepare uh, for us to have worship. And it's always good uh, to acknowledge folk That's when they're doing right. good. Amen. 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 It's always good to do so much negativity in the world. And right. The world waiting for the slightest Negative yeah. thing to happen, they jump all over for you. Yeah, uh, but when people are doing well and doing good, you should give them their roses uh, while they live. Amen. Amen. Um, I also want, uh, I use that as a caveat to say, uh, W3, uh, that we won't have those wolves anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Somebody out there just looking crazy. We don't have those wolves. Um, because God has blessed us. Uh, starting next week, we'll be moving into a church. Amen. We'll be moving into a church next week. Amen. Um, it is located at 855, is it Mac Ray? Yes, right. 855 Mac Ray um, off of Government Boulevard. So I need you all to uh, write down that address. There are some things that our uh, team is going to pass out, but it's 855 Mac Ray. And so we have some handouts for you all as you exit um, out today. Uh, so starting next Sunday, next Ooh, Sunday, please. don't come here. Amen. Yeah. Go to 855 Mac Ray yeah. Avenue. That is yeah. our new location. We're still going to have our 7.30 a.m. service, our 9.30 a.m. Sunday school, and our 11 o'clock service. Uh, we will begin shortly Bible studies in person. Our worship team will be able to rehearse there. We can have some meetings there and fellowship there. Uh, we have access, uh, all access to the building. And so we thank and praise God for this transition that he's moved us out of the Holiday Inn uh, into God's house. Amen. So we thank you praise God for that. And a special, special shout out to our Director of Strategic Ministry, our Director of Operations, and our entire vision uh, team uh, for always looking and praying uh, for us to be in a church building. And they have done a wonderful job. Let's give God praise. <laughs> 
this wasn't pastors finding and out looking. They been looking and texting and calling and researching and all that stuff. And God has answered our prayers. And I'm so excited about what God is getting ready to do. So I say to the number of people uh, who have texted and called uh, deacons and other members of the W3 Baptist Church who have said we are just waiting for y'all to get into a church building. Here it is. Start next Sunday. We will see you at 855 Mac Ray Avenue. There are no more excuses. Come on to the house of the Lord and be where you belong. Amen. 855 Mac Ray Avenue, Mobile, Alabama, 36606, 7:30. 9.30 Sunday school and 11 o'clock service. One more time, let's give God praise for this transition. He is enlarging our territory. And we have been faithful over a few things. And now God has moved us on up to be ruler of much. And so we thank and praise God uh, for this. And again, I'm so excited. Make sure you tell your family, tell your friends, tell them us has got a church. Amen. And until you do right by us. Amen. Come on to worship with us. We all know next Sunday. Uh, known as Easter to many, I don't refer to it as Easter. I call it Resurrection Sunday. Um, but we will have services there, Resurrection Sunday. How uh, tremendous and how um, monumental that is that our first services in this church uh, will be on Resurrection Sunday. Please invite your family and your friends. Uh, those that only come on Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter, <laughs> invite them. Amen. Come on, you know who they are. You're thinking about them right now. Yep, yep. Jumbo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, come on. Tell them to come on and worship with us. Let's have a grand celebration in our first service here at 855 McRae Avenue. Amen. Amen. All right. If all hearts and minds are clear, we ask that you would stand at this time. Do remember that we do have Sunday school uh, starting at 9.30 a.m. And again, our 11 a.m. services uh, right back here. Uh, so you're more than welcome to join us to our online viewing audience, our members that are watching uh, from afar, wherever you may be. We are praying for you. We love you. We thank God for you. And keep on tuning in. And if you are able and you live in the city of Mobile, we'd love to see you in person. We'd love to shake your hand and give you a hug or greet you in some a way or another, but we'd love to see your face in place. But if you cannot make it, continue to be faithful by watching us online. Amen. We have not forgotten about you. We remember you, and we are praying for you. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, and what our hearts have felt. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you are blessing the W3 Baptist Church. We thank you for every song that's been sang, every prayer that has been offered the word of God that has been preached, the lives that have been saved and won for the cause of Christ, for every seed that was given in our offertory moment. We thank you, O Lord. And God, we pray now that as we depart from this place, that we never depart from your presence. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to partake in the suffering of Jesus Christ. And if we partake in his suffering, we should also partake in his resurrection and forever abide with him in glory. Now give us traveling graces for those that are leaving to our various destinations. Let no hurt, harm, or danger come upon us until we meet again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. amen. On your way out, tell three people, don't throw me away. Don't throw me away.